Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Thank you for tuning in. Today I'd like to conclude our review of the M Audio Hammer 88. I'll share with you some final thoughts now that I've been using this one for a while in earnest. Then we'll go over to the PC and we'll check your feedback and questions. So right off the bat, I'd just like to re-emphasize how impressed I am with the build quality. We already talked about this metal panel here that is extremely thick sheet metal here and very sturdy. I've got a real great textured matte finish to it as well. The overall impression of the build quality here is that it wouldn't be out of place on an instrument costing two or three times the price. But not only is this metal panel here, very good and strong but the other panels surrounding the instrument are really good as well let me show you the material they're using here i'm not sure what it is i guess it's plastic but it's very solid and sturdy the same goes for these end cheeks although they are made of plastic it's a very solid and robust feeling bit of plastic and if i precariously balance it here on its edge this bit of material along the front here has got a lovely textured finish to it I don't know if this is plastic or wood, but it's extremely solid with zero, zero flex. Also, if we very carefully look at the underside, again, we have this lovely textured surface and this is not thin plastic at all, guys. This is a solid sheet of perhaps MDF or some very, very thick plastic, but this is really, stable, sturdy and solid. I'm impressed. And over on this side, this part here is also well sturdy. The same end cheek. And overall the instrument just feels high quality. And when I walk past it, I can't help myself from just brushing it or giving it a quick knock. It's really nice. Maybe I'm a weirdo. Regarding the action then, for me, it's just spot on really both the feeling of the weighted hammer action and the rebound speed, the pressure that you need to play and the amount of expressiveness you can get from it, it's pretty much spot on. I stand by my claim that some of these edges do feel a little bit sharp. It's not like they're gonna cut you or anything, but they are a little bit uncomfortable. And you might be wondering, why does it matter if these edges are slightly sharp there. You don't, you don't play those, you play it on top. Well, that's not quite true. Let me show you. If, for example, you're playing octaves or even tenths or something, then you can see my left hand here, my little pinky there is definitely, I hope that's coming across on the video, it will catch on that edge there. If you're doing walking octaves, anything like that, then you're definitely brushing up against that sharp edge. It's just a little bit uncomfortable, but to my surprise, when I did those musical performances the other day, you don't notice it. When you get immersed into the music, those small details pass you by. So probably nothing that you need to worry about. But I just wanted to bring it up as a concern and to give some balance to the review. The black keys have a very nice textured matte black appearance and feel but the white keys are super shiny and glossy. The keys themselves feel quite plasticky and light. Not at all bad. The sort of quality of keys I would expect to find on a keyboard of this price. One thing that I forgot to mention on the previous review, but hopefully you saw this on my performance demonstration, is that these two wheels are lit up. There are red LEDs inside the wheels there that glow in a very nice way. I'm not convinced it's appropriate for a piano keyboard controller. Maybe it's something you can disable in the software if you don't like it, but I haven't dug into that. But it's an interesting feature. And regarding the faders and the buttons, there is actually a bit more space to squeeze in a couple more here. Perhaps they could have given us two faders and a couple more buttons. And once again, let me reiterate, it's lovely to see that they've included a music arrest or a music stand with this. That's awesome and I hope other manufacturers follow suit. One cool thing about the sustain pedal input is that different sustain pedals have different polarities, 
but if you plug the sustain pedal in and then power this one on, it detects what the polarity is and sets it accordingly. That's very convenient. And I've really grown to love the appearance of this keyboard. I love this uncluttered panel with the minimalistic, utilitarian, chunky, rounded design. It's really attractive. Especially when you see how the light reflects from that matte black textured finish there. I put the keyboard on its back again. There's one small issue I'd like to bring to your attention. There are six of these rubber feet and on this one, the screw there is actually protruding out from the surface of the rubber foot. So this would actually scratch your desk if you were to put it on a desk. So be warned. It didn't really feel to me like a 20 kilogram keyboard. So I took it over to the scales and weighed it. It's actually 16.3 kilograms in case that's important to you. Let's go over to the computer and check your feedback and questions. Let's see what you guys have been saying. John, for example, says that the lack of aftertouch was a deal breaker for him. Lots of comments about the weather, of course. I would love to see more about the software. I'm not intending to install the software actually because I don't really need to, but let's take a quick look at the manual and see what features it has. I realized you cannot do any configuration changes on the instrument whatsoever. You are going to need the preset editor software. But maybe that's not an issue because typically you're using a controller with the PC anyway, so you might as well use a piece of software. Probably easier than messing around with menus or strange functions on the keyboard itself. Let's see what this software can do. Here then is an overview of what you can do. As you might expect, you can configure the fader and expression pedal, foot switches, buttons, keybed zones, and the wheels. We won't dwell on this, but I did want to mention that you can split the key bed into four different zones. Each zone can have its own MIDI channel. And apparently no settings to adjust the LED in case you were wondering if you can change the color or switch it off. It doesn't seem to be possible. Christian has just bought a Studio Logic Studio 88. Studio Logic have some very interesting controllers and I would love to try their Studio 88, the Grand 88, or perhaps a Studio 76, which might really suit me down to the ground. Mike thinks that it would be a nice option to buy and would like a demonstration of the starter package. I don't think I'll do that actually because I've got more than enough plugins already. Leonard mentions his Keystation 61 ES has a sluggish action. That I think is a synthesizer action. He praises the build quality of the M Audio controllers. <laughs> it survived three cats and a lot of drops. Thank you, Jack, for the kind words. MIDI Notes agrees that it looks remarkable value for money, but he was disappointed you didn't get the chance to include your demo of playing it. Yeah, we lost that footage, unfortunately. By the time this goes out, you should have seen me playing some piano pieces about heaven. Interesting idea. Will you be trying it into your Nord as well, suggests MIDI Notes. Yeah, we could have used it to play some of the piano samples. I didn't do that and probably won't now. Weslands, I think the A88 is slightly smaller than the Hammer 88. A lot of love for the A88 in the comments today. The RD64 was a very interesting instrument. That was a 64 key weighted action, but with inbuilt sounds as well. Kirk is a bit wary about the support from M Audio and their drivers. Not my experience. I've had my M Audio audio card for 15 years and there are still up to date drivers for it. Your mileage may vary. The Spectator is waiting for the Complete Control S88 Mark II. Yep, yeah, that's very interesting. There's Mark II versions of the 61 and the 49. We're still waiting for the 88. If and when it does come, I'd love to try one too. I wouldn't say the keys are wiggly. Quite plasticky, but what you'd expect at this price point. Selenium Glow wonders about the slider on the top left. You can assign it via the editor software. Yotam wondering about an 88 controller with wooden keys. I know Studio Logic's top of the range controller has wooden keys. One day I'd love to try one. Abhishek is wondering about a 49 key controller. There are so many and I haven't tried many. If anybody wants to help him out, then leave a reply in the comments. Crimson made some interesting points about the Akai MPK 88, in particular the Pro Tools First, which he says is freemium. 
So that's not really something that M Audio are giving away. He also mentions later on that, that Pro Tools first, you can't use VST plugins, only in-app purchases of Avid products. So I recommend you go with Ableton Live Lite, which I think is awesome. I'm still planning on doing my Synthwave tutorial using Ableton Live Lite, so keep an eye out for that. We are more or less back where we started. The keyboard is in the box and ready to go back to the manufacturer. Now, I've enjoyed it a lot and I could keep it for longer, but I'd rather use the space and my time to review and demonstrate some other 88 note weighted controllers. There are ones from Roland, Studio Logic, and Native Instruments that particularly interest me. So hopefully we can get some in and do another review. If you think that that sounds interesting, then remember to subscribe to the channel and thank you very much if you already have done so. Thanks also for watching this video. I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.